Hello and welcome to Learning AutoCAD 2013. This fourth tutorial is aimed to teach you the basic drawing aids. The purpose of using drawing aids is to increase accuracy and productivity. The better you use this, the faster you will draw. By the end of this tutorial, you should be drawing on your own and in fact, check for the next tutorial in which we will draw together our last homework. AutoCAD has several drawing aids and our crosshair here is just one example. Today we'll go over the basic characteristics of some which you see down here and later when we get to the point of using those more precisely we'll explain this in more details. Our first one is the snap mode or simply snap. When using snap mode CAD basically enforces to move your crosshair at specific intervals in your model space. So instead of being able to move your cursor in space freely, it snaps at predetermined distance. Let's see it working with the circle command. As you can see now, while I'm moving the cursor to specify the second point or the size of the circle, I can move my crosshair freely. However, if I turn on the snap mode, which comes off by default, the result is very different. In order for you to notice it, let's right click on top of the snap button at the status bar and let's click on settings. In the drafting and settings dialog box, let's now modify the snap spacing from the default to a 3 inch size. When click OK and repeat the command, you can notice now the difference in the behavior of the crosshair. Now I just can move it freely. If you notice the blue tooltip next to the crosshair, you will see that 3 inches is predefined or then 6. So it adds up to 3 inches increments. The only way for that number to slide up and down freely is turning off the snap mode by going to the bottom on the status bar or by using F9, F9 key at the keyboard. Now when turning off and then back on, you see the clear difference. Snap is mostly used combined with other drawing aids and with specific techniques. Now let's right click again the bottom and notice that at the display option here, when you point at it, CAD gives you the list of drawing aids located down here that are visible by default. If you prefer not to have one visible, just uncheck it and it will disappear from the icons down here. Now let's go back to the settings option here and let's click it. Notice the check mark next to where it says equal X and Y spacing. When check it means that it will behave the same way in both the X and Y coordinates. If we uncheck it, we can specify different distances for X and Y. And down here, we can select from two choices CAD offers, rectangular or isometric snap. So if need to draw, if you need to draw an isometric view or something similar, snap will be very handy. Later you'll see how snap is useful when drafting, but for now you have an idea of how it works, what it does and how to use it. Our next one is the grid drawing aid. This aid refers to the horizontal and vertical lines we can see by default in the background of our model space. By clicking the grid button, off and on, you can see this feature disappear and appears back. The grid mode functions like a virtual graph paper. Normally, we use it only for visual reference. But again, we can modify the appearance of it by going to the settings window the same way we did with the snap mode. Now we use the right side of the snap and grid tab and you can see here at the grid spacing section that I'm changing the size of the grid display to 3 inches. Now see how it increases the size when clicking OK. In addition to that, you can modify other settings of the grid appearance and I encourage you to come here and play a little bit with it so you can see how it works. In my case, I'm going to uncheck it now and let's move to our next one, which is ortho mode. Basically, ortho refers to a drawing mode where you can only draw vertically and horizontally, 
let's see it in action with the line command and you can see that my line could be positioned the way I want because ortho is off by default but if I turn it on see what happens and you could do it with the F8 now it enforces straight lines at all times and this is very helpful because you can combine ortho with direct entry which most likely you remember from our last tutorial and it produces a fast and accurate way to draw straight lines at exact measurements without calculating any position in space based on the coordinate system so in other words you can forget uh, that you are in a coordinate system as long as you know how to use it correctly and combine it with the red entry. Our next uh, drawing aid is polar tracking. And as we saw in the last tutorial, polar refers to draw at an angle. The difference with ortho is that it's not obligated, but suggesting you specific angles so you can decide if you want to use it or not. Polar tracking, which is off by default and can be turned on with F10, causes our crosshair to snap at specific predefined angles. As you can see here, nothing is happening while I'm moving the cursor. But if I turn it on, you can see the rubber line or dotted line, which is the suggested line, to appear at square angles. Now let's change that. Let's go to settings to change the angles and you can see it happening better. In the polar tracking tab, the default angle is 90 degrees, which also means 0, 180, 270 and so on and so forth. The drop down menu suggests, however, that we can vary it and we'll change it to 45. So this means that at increments of 45 degrees from our horizontal and vertical lines, it will suggest and snap to the line when we approach it. We also have here other options which you can see later on your own and when we repeat the command click OK and we repeat the command you can see that when we get close to any angle near to 45 degree it snaps at that angle and you can use this feature to combine with direct entry the same way we did with Orsomo. And it's a very efficient way to draw at specific angles without having to use polar coordinate entry. Now let's move to the following aid, which is object snap. And it could be activated also with F3. And object snaps refers to CAD suggesting and snapping at specific points within objects. Let's draw some objects to see it working and depending on the objects, each one has different suggested points. When a command is active and you start hovering over some objects, you can see that some suggestions appear with markers like circles, squares, or triangles. Each shape has a specific meaning. So, for example, squares means endpoints of lines or objects, while triangles means middle or midpoints. Object Snap is really helpful since it allows you to draw with extreme precision. When you use the suggested points, you get a perfect connection. In this example, you can see what we're talking about. I'm drawing a line here which seems to be connected to this one also. Now, since I'm doing it based on appearance after it's done, I zoom in really close just to discover that these lines are in fact separated, are not connected at all. So if my intention was to connect both lines, I choose being used one of the suggestions of object snap. To see all of the available options, we need to go here, right click and select settings. Then in the object snap tab, we have all the possible options. By unchecking or checking any of these choices, you're telling CAD whether you want or not to get those possible points as a suggestion once you get close enough to any of these points when hovering over any object. In my case here, I will only uncheck the nearest point because it's not very precise or accurate and sometimes interfere with other points. You can try again on your own and checking and unchecking some of of this and see how it works. Now if we repeat the line command 
with object snap and we use any of these points you can see here that it will attach to the exact place it is suggesting no matter if it is a midpoint endpoint center point or any other so in addition to that also you got a perfect connection with no space in between points which you will see later that is really really important our next drawing aid is called object snap tracking and basically this is a mode that provides horizontal and vertical alignment path for locating points after a point is acquired when you use object snap as you can see here i'm using object snap but there is no suggestion path right now by default object snap tracking is off but the moment we use f11 to turn it on you can see the dotted line or suggested lines it generate appears on the screen this is what it does and you can use it to locate or pick the next point with direct entry method without using for example ortho mode so this drawing aid is intimately related to our previous one for all snap or object snap tracking to work properly two conditions however needs to be present number one object snap our previous drawing aid needs to be on or active and number two you need to hover near the place you intend to acquire a point enough time to allow the command to acquire the desired point and to provide you with the suggested dotted line or path so you can look for the following point and finally our next uh, drawing aid is the dynamic input which we already saw in our previous tutorials and is basically a temporary input area which appears on your screen below and to the right of the crosshair as you can see here at the center of the screen this drawing aid allows you to focus on your crosshair and therefore you don't need to look down to the command line or prompt to see what's going on now depending on the command you activate the information and options it will give you might vary, but it will be very similar to the one at the command line. Sometimes, however, you might have a very busy drawing and it will be convenient for you to turn off temporarily the dynamic input. And for that, you can use the F12 key at your keyboard or the bottom at the status bar. Well, this concludes our basic drawing aids analysis. And now, a final reminder for you. If you like and enjoy this video, please click like it so you can support our efforts to produce better tutorials. Now, remember that the following tutorial is going to be a drawing session in which we will draw together our last tutorial's homework. Remember the desk, based on the knowledge you have gotten from this series so far. And finally, thanks a lot for watching and remember to subscribe to this channel. See you next time.